Hello, everybody. My name is Barry Johns, and this is Studio Talk. And here are two of my very favorite things. All right, all right, all right. So put that back over there. That's my little uh, mascot for the channel over there. My daughter gave that to me for Christmas last year. It's a reindeer, ladies and gentlemen. And then, of course, who doesn't like Texas Pete hot sauce? Well, maybe you, but I happen to love that stuff. Better, 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 in my opinion, than Louisiana hot sauce. But we're going to talk about some hot sauce here, and I just thought of that. That little pun just came to me. Today, we're going to talk about master bus processors. Specifically, I'm going to highlight the Neve Portico 2 master bus processor, of which is a freaking awesome unit, okay? But we're also going to get a little deeper into the discussion. I'm going to show you examples of it. I'm also going to bring in a really high-quality limiter, outboard limiter, at a, later, a little bit later on to kind of spice in some things up. Um, and then I'm going to compare it to some plugins and some hardware. I'll talk about that a little bit in a second. But to understand what you're about ready to listen to first, uh, first of all, this is a song downloaded from Produce Like a Pro. All right, so I did that to say, to, so I didn't avoid, so I could avoid, if I can get my words out, avoid any potential copyright issues. So hopefully that works that way. I haven't had any issues so far. Um, so I'm going to use that. In this particular track coming up, uh, there are no EQs, plugins, nothing on it. It's, it's straight downloaded, straight from Produce Like a Pro. And that is a place I highly recommend if you're just learning for the record. It's a great community over there. Great place to get feedback when you're learning how to mix. Um, but then keep, it, keep in mind in this particular mix, okay, basically all I've done is brought up a rough mix of it with faders, and then there's panning, and that's the extent of it. So that's what you're going to be checking out throughout this video. In the first section of this video, which will be up next, I'm basically going to go over the, I'm going to demonstrate for you the basic controls of the unit um, and kind of just mess around with the dials while everything's playing so you get a vibe of what each one of these things can potentially do and then we'll dive in a little bit deeper. So let's head over to that right now. I talked about the fact that I'm going to be incorporating uh, a great hardware limiter into this, and that's going to be the Better Maker Mastering Limiter. That thing is freaking phenomenal and awesome. Now, I didn't have a chance 
to get in there and really get to learn that the way I did. Both these units were loaned to me by a friend here who operates a local facility here in Orlando uh, for me to check out. And so I, I didn't have a ton of time with it because I had to be respectful of his time. Um, so I didn't get a chance to fully go through that, but that's just to show these two in combination what they can do. So I'm only going over basic settings of that better maker. We'll start out by me doing some tweaking back and forth on the Portico 2, the knee Portico 2 master bus processor, and then bringing in the uh, better maker limiter to kind of get a feel for what these two would be like used in combination with each other. Again, this is just kind of a basic over new overview, not really diving in too deep. So let's check that out right now. Like me, you happen to think both those particular units sound pretty amazing together. Now keep in mind, I did push both of those to the extreme. So some of what you just heard sounded pretty bad. I understand that. But I think it's important to understand that either one of these units can be pushed too far to where you're going too far. And I thought it was important to show that. Okay, so next up, I talked about comparing uh, this particular unit up against my Stam Audio hardware SSL bus compressor, as well as a couple of plugins. So, like I said before, I own the Stam Audio. I think it's a fantastic bang for the buck in its price range. I think it's the very best you can get in its price range as far as a clone is concerned for an SSL bus compressor. Um, so I also have a review of that on my channel. If you want to go check that out, just go to my channel under the, the search section, just type, type in STAM as an example. Should be pretty easy to find. Check that out if you're interested. All right, 
So we've also got the Neat Portico 2. Now we've got the Stam Audio 500 Series SSL bus compressor. And then I pull in some other, what I consider some of the best master bus compressors as far as plugins available out there. Um, and don't get into a flame war with me on that. I said some of the best. I didn't say the best. Um, and so that would be, uh, now I understand, I'm not, I gotta say this, I'm not, we're not doing apples to apples here. There's no way I could really do apples to apples because there's no plugin, other hardware emulation that does what the Neve does. There's plenty of other hardware versions and software plugins that does what the Stam Audio does, but I think it's important to incorporate some, some variety in here as well. So the plugins I've chosen are Universal Audio's UAD Spark uh, API 2500 bus compressor plugin, which I think is freaking phenomenal but for the record. Okay, and you can get as part, you can get that on subscription in the native world without needing their DSP if you subscribe to their Spark plugin uh, bundle. Uh, and then next up, I've got SSL's own version of their SSL bus compressor plugin that I also think that's the best, in my opinion, that is the one I like the most of SSL bus compressor plugins available today. So I think what we're really trying to do is here get some perspective. We'll talk about what that perspective is after we watch this video. So keep in mind as you go into the next one, important thing, these are not level matched. I did not waste my time trying to level match them. It would have taken me a very long time to do that because of some of the limitations in this style of doing capturing all this at the same time. Okay, it's not like I'm doing one thing at a time. It's one immediately right after the other with multiple cameras going and multiple things like that. So, so keep in mind what, what I encourage you to listen for because people get wrapped up about that whole matching levels and stuff. And I do agree that's important under certain situations. Um, but for the most part, most people don't use their hardware like that. They'll push it quite a bit. Um, and so, uh, but that's not everybody. And I understand that. So don't get too wrapped up about that. So, but what I encourage you to really think about as you're listening to this, it's important that I plant this seed before you go into it. And that is just listen to the character. What each one of these units are basically, how they, how are they affecting the sound different from each other? Okay, and just get a vibe for that. Uh, and, and so kind of keep that in mind as you're listening to this. So let's head on over and watch these all these particular units be compared against the Ni Portico 2 Master Bus Compressor. Let's go. chance to hear that. So now let's talk about the elephant in the room. And this particular elephant, man, you better get you a skyscraper to crawl on top of this bad boy because this thing is over $4,400. Okay. And so I think that's an important thing you have to consider. Even, you know, even if you absolutely love it, like this guy here does, that's a hard pill to swallow. One, one piece of gear, $4,400. And if you add in that, um, that better maker, uh, limiter, you're adding another, you know, a little less than 3000 I think, between two and $3,000. i will I'll pop the exact prices up here in a second. Uh, compared to that Stam Audio unit, okay, if you're comparing the, the Neve to the Stam Audio, I think that's less that's uh, less than $1,000. I'll pop that up here in a second, too. Can't remember off the top of my head exactly what I paid for that. Um, but but anyway, so I think it's important to kind of understand that distinction because that, that'll be the most obvious thing, I think, for a lot of people. And then, of course, you've got the middle of the road. You've got the... And, and is it truly fair to compare the Stam against a Neva uh, sub thousand to a uh, over four thousand? You know, probably not in itself. But I think you what you have to decide is it worth the additional more than the Stam cost to bump up to that, or even quite frankly, the actual SSS SSL bus compressor, which they just came out with the second version of that. That it's getting reviews, really, really good reviews. But I, you know, that that's over two thousand dollars, and so. 
these things, there's a reason these things cost so much money is because they, they do some magical stuff, right? And so if you're in a studio and you're making money, okay, you're making money from that studio and you're in a situation to where these things can be in a return on investment for you, um, then I think that particular unit is worth its weight and go, that, that unit being the Neve Vortico 2 Master Bus Compressor. Now, for the record, in my opinion, I could get it to do just, I mean, extremely close when I'm not using all the other features like the silk, the depth, uh, the deep, and then, of course, the widening. When I'm not using those, I can get it and, the, and my Stam Audio to sound very similar to each other. I mean, very, very, very similar. So, but keep in mind that the Neve can do a lot more than the Stam can or even uh, SSL's version, which can do more than the Stam can do. Um, and so I think I think you've got to understand that and take that into consideration. Also, the Neve Portico 2 is used in a ton of mastering facilities. So it's that level of master bus compressor uh, but that price tag is going to scare the majority of you off and will scare me off as well. And I've been doing this for a long time and I own, I've invested a lot back there. Um, but do I think it's phenomenal? I absolutely do. I think that's probably the very best master bus compressor I've ever heard in my life. Now, I've got a chance to play with it well beyond the scope of this video and dive into it even after quite a bit, a lot after I made the, shot those particular videos. They were actually shot over a week ago. I'm kind of just getting around to it today uh, as far as doing this part of it. Um, but so I've got to play with it a lot more. And I have to tell you, that thing is awesome. It is beyond awesome. But am I going to shell out $4,400 for one? Probably not. Probably not. But if I was, I'd go use. Now, I did look on Reverb, and these can ha be had for around $3,300. You can get a little bit less than that, but you're going to get the first version of this that didn't have uh, the bypass to bypass everything, you know, everything on the particular, um, uh, on the unit, uh, whereas they added that on the second one. And then since they've given a faceplate update, the one I had had the white, white face plate, uh, face plate, the newer ones have the black, which I think looks a little bit cooler, but I'm not so sure if there's any difference between those at that point. Maybe there is. Um, uh, but regardless, you can pick up the unit that I showed you today for around $3,300 pretty easily on reverb. So keep that in mind. Save quite a money if you save quite a bit of money if you buy used. All right. And so that I think you've got to consider. Maybe at three thousand, yeah, I might start considering at that point because it's that good. Um, you know, and especially if you do your own mastering, then it definitely starts to get worth it at that point. Uh, if you if you're producing stuff that that eventually you're hoping will lead to you making money, whether that's you doing it for someone else or you doing your own music and and plan on really seriously trying to put it out there. But, you know, I think that Stam Audio holds up its holds up itself incredibly well for its price range. I mean, incredibly well. I, I use that in every single mix. I love it. Um, but I would pick that, that Neat Fortico 2 over it in a heartbeat. Wouldn't think twice about it. Um, but that said, I could certainly live with that Stam for a very long time. And so keep that in mind. So what are the differences? What did I hear the differences between the hardware and the plugins. I thought, I think both those plugins are very, very good. And if you're staying in the box and that's where you that's where you plan to be, those two are worth investigating and, and taking time. You you can you can rent the um, or subscribe to the UAD thing for just a month and find try everything out plus their other stuff. Uh, and then uh, SSL has discounts on those plugins all the time. And of course the SSL, they also make their uh, um, master bus compressor as well as their channel strip available in a single um, uh, control surface that matches up nicely with those back there, which is the SSL UF8, the same size, and they match up nicely for that. I've got a review on that in my channel. I actually did that in the beginning of my channel. Uh, so just go in there and type in SSL, and you'll get a bunch of videos, but that'll be one probably come to the top. And so check that out if you're interested. Now, the differences between, again, some of the differences, there are differences. I think both those plugins do a very, very good job for in the box. And I think both of them capture the overall vibe and generality and tonal variations that you would expect from a high quality master bus compressor. Understanding, again, we're not doing apples to apples. We already discussed that. But I think, I think putting these various pieces in perspective, because that's what we're all making choices about. Do we buy the Neve? Do we buy the SSL? 
Do we buy the stamp? Do we buy um, Audioscape? Do we buy whatever, Worm Audio? I don't care what you're buying, but do we buy those? Uh, which one is going to suit me best? And I think that that's a general kind of basic overview. We could dive much deeper into that, of course. Um, but I think for me, and and this this held true, this was evidently true in the master bus section. For me, it wasn't even questioned without my ears. Now, hopefully you were listening to this in your studio on a great set of monitors or a great set of headphones. That's the best way to do a particular uh, video like this. But for me, what, what the plugins can't do, okay, is capture the 3D, you know, it's hard to describe that, but the 3D, the clarity, the depth, those three, those three things or what hardware in general gives you across the board. It just gives you across the board. Whether or not it's cumulative effect of that over a huge mix will make a huge difference or not is a debatable thing, and a lot of people debate the pros and cons of it. But there's a reason that just about everything you hear, you know, that's widely accepted and widely liked and appreciated was done through some of the best hardware on the planet. It may have been mixed in the box, um, but it was recorded and tracked with some of the very best hardware, uh, mic preamps, compressors, EQs, as well as rooms and talented people and everything. And let's face it, you get a mix like that that was tracked like that and recorded in that environment, it basically mixes itself. So kind of keep that in mind. It already, they're already getting that three-dimensional. If you're recording at home and you're not doing that, then you're not going to get that. And I think that's where the misunderstanding happens a lot of the time when it comes to this because they see a lot of these popular mix engineers out there that that are making it well known to everybody that they completely mix in the box. And they do, and they do, but they're working with really, really, really incredibly well-tracked um, sources. Okay, So keep that in mind. If you're doing things at home or even in your studio, you may or may not be able to create uh, those sonic characteristics in your space with your equipment, okay? Maybe you can. If you can, great. I know I can now because I've got a lot of hardware here. Now, I don't have the space they have, so I'm going to have some limitations, but that's only going to ring true for certain instruments, okay? Most things, or a lot of things, it won't ring true. So, but that said, okay, you still have to, it depends on what you're doing. Look, if you're, if you're a home warrior and you're just sitting at home, and you're recording your stuff because you enjoy it and you love it and you're not deeply obsessed with this like I am, you know, because I am all of those things I just talked about, but I am also deeply, deeply obsessed with this and love this. So I invest more and, and I've amassed this over decades, okay? I just didn't go out yesterday and buy everything in the studio. And so, so I can appreciate that. But if you're just sitting at home, it is perfectly acceptable and perfectly fine for you to live and stay for ever inside the box, okay? Don't think it's something you have to do. But if you want to get to that next level and do some of these other things and really try to create the very best you can do, that's when hardware would come in. Once I went all hardware for my mix bus, it changed everything for me. Everything for me. Uh, it made the biggest difference, okay? That is where I guarantee you it makes a difference. And so whether or not that difference is justifiable in your financial situation and where you are at your skill set, only you can come to that conclusion. But, uh, you know, I'm not pushing hardware. I think plugins do a f fantastic job. Let's face it, of course, I use a ton of plugins. I like plugins, I enjoy them very much, uh, and they can sound fantastic. But if I can get a piece of hardware, especially a quality piece of hardware, to put in place of that, uh, especially at the tracking stage, you better believe I'm going to do that, all right? So those are things, that's just my perspective. You may happen to disagree with me, and that's perfectly, perfectly fine, all right? So it's time to wrap this thing up. If you like the things I talk about on this channel, do me a favor, hit that like button, then that subscribe button, and then go over to that notification bell. It's important that if you really like this, like the content I put out, please support me in doing that, even if it's not something you do on a regular basis. You don't have to do the notification bell, but I appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. I really try very hard to put out content that helps people. I think the more you watch my channel, the more you'll find I'm not really like anybody else out there. I'm always going to give you the straight talk, 
the real deal, never influenced by any outside sources. Um, and you can tell that by quite a few of the flame wars I've thrown at a couple of my audio nemesis out there uh, that I think are screwing people like you and me over, and that would be Avid specifically. Got to get that in there. All right, and so I think you got to use caution, here, caution when going down that road with that company uh, for most people. There are some people you have no choice. I understand that. Um, so until now, oh, do me a favor. If you got some comments, leave them down below. All I ask, be respectful. Okay, be respectful. You start attacking people, doing things like that. Those comments are going to disappear, okay? I, we want, we want, I very rarely delete a comment, but if somebody comes in, it's just rude and obnoxious to somebody, including myself, I'm going to get rid of that. If we're going to have a discussion, let's have an adult civilized discussion, okay? Enough of this keyboard warrior nonsense that happens out there in social media and other places. We're all adults here. Let's all have discussions and appreciate the fact that we can agree to disagree on things, okay? I certainly can. So all that said, until next time, I hope every one of you have a great day. Go check out some of my other videos. I think you'll like them. Um, and if not, tell me why. Give me some comments and let me know what you like and what you don't like about the channel. But until next time, I hope every one of you have a great day. Bye-bye.